Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. I hope you're all doing very, very well. I see we have a number of students signing in, and I just want to make sure that I give them just a few seconds to um, be a part of our webinar. So as we wait for, again, a split of a second, I want to welcome you to our webinar um, tonight. Um, we are very excited to have you here once again. Congratulations for um, this admission to McGill University and uh, the Des Hotels Faculty of Management here at McGill University. So I just like to start off um, by getting to know a little bit about all of you. So if you can, in the chat, go ahead and let us know where you're joining us from before I introduce myself and my wonderful um, colleague, Angela. So before we introduce ourselves, Again, we want to know each other. It's not just us, it's all of us together. So um, go ahead and in the chat, feel free to um, let us know where you're joining us from. So thank you very much. We have a nerd from Mexico, Hong Kong, fantastic, another person from Hong Kong, a number of people from Hong Kong. This is amazing. Um, friends, thank you for um, joining us. Cassandre, that we have from Chicago, Tara, France as well, Germany, Boston. Thank you for joining us. China, there you go. Singapore, we have France, Hong Kong, France, London, China. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of students um, who are Kuwait as well. New York, okay, down south, um, France, China. So we really have a wonderful crowd today. Um, it is very late for you guys, but again, we will make sure to make it worth your time. And with and having said that, let me just go ahead and tell you what we're going to do today. So our presentation um, is divided into five parts. We're going to talk about um, the faculty um, overview. We will then talk about, um, Angela is going to talk about the program structure. Um, we're going to, she's also going to talk about the hands-on experience um, that you will be able to have. And of course, the student services. And we will wrap up with a Q&A. So the presentation is going to take um, about 20 minutes minutes um, and then we will leave the remaining time until the 45th minute um, of Q&A. So I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Patricia and I'm an admissions and recruitment officer here at McGill University and once again welcome to our virtual space, um, virtual McGill virtual space. And now I'd like to hand it over to Angela who will um, go ahead and um, introduce herself and also um, share with you a lot of knowledge. So once again, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, welcome once again to this webinar and welcome to this uh, McGill space. So Angela, feel free to share your screen and um, you'll be able to um, start the presentation. So this is wonderful. We still have people uh, logging in and uh, that'd be wonderful. There we go, excellent. All right, excellent. Thank you, Patricia. All right, my name is Angela and I will welcome everyone uh, to this evening's uh, presentation. It's great to see so many people coming actually. Um, I saw that uh, we're from all over, which is great. So I'm gonna get a lot of variety of questions. So please be patient, obviously. Um, I'm just gonna introduce myself. I am a senior academic advisor in the Digital Faculty of Management. Um, I've been with uh, the faculty now for about 10 years. And previous to this, I actually was an advisor at another university down the street for 10 years as well, uh, also in the business faculty. So I think I have a, accumulated a good amount of knowledge about business. And I have to say that uh, Des Hotel has a lot to offer. So I don't know how many of you actually are, you know, still on the fence thinking about it, um, or if you're just here to gobble up as much knowledge as possible, I'm here to sort of help you along the way. Either I have myself and my colleagues, we're eight advisors in our office. So our total numbers, I'm gonna go through a little bit, just to give you a little bit of an overview of where our students are coming from, how many students we actually have. So we have a very small faculty, as you see about 2,300 students, to be honest, it's not a big school. Um, 
we like to keep it small. We only accept about 585 to 600 students annually. Um, so a lot of them do come from Quebec, obviously, a lot from Canada, but we do have a huge uh, portion from international and US uh, locations, obviously. So we want to have that variety. And that's important also for our faculty, because we consider ourselves a very global faculty. Uh, and I'm proud to say that our professors and everyone in the faculty is from anywhere, which is great. I love it. All over the world, you meet people. Um, I don't want to get too much into sample schedules. Um, we have all sample schedules, depending where you're from, if you're from the French back, if you're from the A levels, things like that, we have sample schedules for everyone. But I think I just want to sort of give you a little bit of an overview of what kind of courses you'll be taking if you come in as a U1 student. Now U1 students, these are the ones, like I said, from French back, uh, um, A levels, uh, international back sometimes, CEGEP students, I can't forget you guys. Um, all of those start as a U1. And in that first year, you're required to take eight to 10 courses. They don't all have to be business, of course. You could always talk to an advisor about that, but this is the recommended schedule. So we're looking a little bit, we have a course called BUSA 250, Expressive Analysis for Management. And this course is basically a writing course, helps you with CV writing, and it's your first contact actually with our career services, because uh, we have our very own career, career services. I'm not going to get into that yet, because I have a whole other slide on that. Um, but just to give you an overview, so you get accounting, organizational behavior, marketing, finance, all these courses. The average class size is also about 65 students um, in your first year. It sort of gets a little bit lower in your second year. Uh, as time goes on, maybe class sizes are a range of about 40 students. The biggest you'll see in management, I'm not talking about arts now, you will have to take electives also. Arts courses are a little different. Uh, but in management, we're looking at a, sometimes a max of about 150 students. But our classrooms, as you see, some of the, I kept some of the images and the backgrounds, if you pay attention attention to them. The classrooms are, this is probably a 40 classroom, 40 person classroom. It doesn't really feel that way. So I'm going to show you a little bit how your credits are spread out. I think that that's also important. A lot of people get a little confused. Everyone has to do 120 credits. So where do those credits come from? Your freshman courses, as you see there, that includes freshman or advanced standing. So that's 30 credits that includes math courses and BUSA 250. If you're required to take math courses, you'll have to check on the website to see which math courses you're required to take. Uh, we have all that information, so it depends on where you're coming from. Core courses is 36 credits or it depends, 36 credits generally, it depends on what major you're choosing. A major in two concentrations is 30 credits and the remainder is all electives or it could be turned into another concentration, a minor outside the faculty. There's lots of options available to our students. We don't want you just to be narrow thinking just, I wanna do business and that's it. Uh, you can actually do variety. We don't do double cross majors or double majors as some people call it, or uh, we do double majors within our faculty, but not cross faculty. So you can't do uh, say a finance major and a comp sci major, unfortunately. You could do a minor, however. So we could always talk about that. Um, now, the nice thing is, our program doesn't force you to choose your major or concentration or what you want to study right away. And that's what I really love about it. Your first year is mostly core courses if you come in as a U1 student. As a U0, you have even more time. So don't even panic about it. Don't worry about it at all. Um, so you'll see that majors, we have lots of different majors available. Uh, we have some new ones. Um, which will be obviously business analytics. That's a new one that's come out. Retail management is another major that's come out. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones that have been recently. We've had so many changes. Um, I think also now that we had sustainability, it's been around for quite some time, uh, but these are the big ones, obviously. We have other programs, obviously, like joint honors programs, uh, which consist of joint honors economics accounting or economics finance. These are very particular programs and they're not for everyone. So I do caution students um, taking those. So 
we always say speak to an advisor we are accessible and i'm actually i have a pdf afterwards on the steps you need to go through before actually starting to communicate with us um all right i can now move on i guess to international experiences now i know it's hard i find talking about international experiences right now we're just coming hopefully out of a pandemic um it has been a little bit difficult obviously but we have kept up a lot of our partnerships uh, so we have 55 business to business schools which means that you could go to study in your second year normally or third if you start in your u0 year uh, to over 55 business schools we have all these 160 universities in countries um, that you could actually go to but otherwise we have lots of places across the world and we have a huge list on our website now the thing with international experiences is that we just it's not limited to exchanges obviously exchanges are great because it's a planned sort of thing that you take courses for credit at another university there's other experiences that we actually offer which is dynamic cities uh, as you see every year a group of about 30 students alumni uh, MBA and BCom students go to different countries and they actually visit the country they see CEOs they meet with companies they learn how business is conducted in these different places um, I went to actually the year 2015 to Hong Kong Jakarta Bali it was phenomenal a great experience I recommend it to students you get credit also for doing this a three credit course uh, there's other experiences as well that we've we've introduced which is the Brazil study trip and the Israel study trip during the summer uh, and I didn't mention dynamic cities takes place just during 11 days during the spring break, uh, which is great. It's a nice little way to sp spend spring break. Okay, let me see where are we at. Okay, I do want to mention that obviously McGill's a great place to be just because we're also in a fantastic city. Um, I know you hear a lot about Montreal, the ones that are from Montreal would probably testify to this as well. But we do have also a lot of support systems in place uh, from international student services and things like that to obviously our wellness, which is a big concern uh, for us. We have our own, um, basically, we have in-house counseling available, peer groups, uh, all types of, uh, they're called local wellness advisors. Uh, these are basically, each faculty has their own and they're there to help support you. The other thing I'd like to mention also what we offer um, is every new student that comes into today's hotel actually gets to meet with an academic advisor within their first year. I'd say even within the first semester, really. We normally meet students in October, November for a one-on-one -on -one session. And that's a great time to ask all those questions. So, so some students come with huge lists of questions that they've come across, things that they wanna know. How do I plan my studies? Where am I going? What am I doing? And that's what we're there for. We have lots of advisors and we're very easy to reach, to be perfectly honest, um, because we have a small group of students that we work with. All right. I think I, I know I'm sort of speeding along, I feel a little bit, but I mean, there's a lot and I know you'll have a lot of questions also, um, but it will come when you actually start as well. So a lot of specific questions will be answered. I'm trying to be very general. Um, career management. I love this because career services is integrated into our faculty. We have our own people that work uh, in career management. Uh, so we have advisors in that area. So this is basically to give you a bit of an idea where students are going upon graduation. So once you actually finish your BCom degree, a lot of students actually stay in Canada, regardless of where they're from originally. 18, it's still a strong 18% that go internationally uh, but a lot of them actually stay here in Quebec. Obviously, the consideration is always that you speak a bit of French. It's not essential, uh, but in most jobs, recommended. Just so this is just to give you an overview. I will share, obviously, if you want these PowerPoints, uh, it will probably be available and there'll be a recording anyways, and you'll get it. Another thing a lot of students are concerned with, placement rate. Now, obviously, this 
the pandemic has actually changed things. Um, a lot of students are actually opting to go to graduate school. These are the most recent stats. We have a placement rate right now of 78%. It used to be in the 90s, but a lot of students are actually opting to do alternative things, starting companies, uh, their own businesses, entrepreneurial sort of things. Uh, there's also a lot of students actually, like I said, go to graduate school now. Uh, this, the average base salary is, they say 60,000. I mean, it's, it's a little bit, it's roughly around there, to be honest. I know they say, uh, these are the reported ones, obviously. We don't have everybody's salary, but that's just to give you a rough idea where everyone stands. So that's, I know it's very brief. I know I'm gonna probably spend most of my time to be perfectly honest on the questions. Uh, so I don't mind doing that. I will, here's, if anyone wants to take note, certainly my, here's my email address and I could direct you to the appropriate people to, if you have certain questions, but I know that we have some, I will stop sharing here. There we Excellent. go. Excellent. Thank you right. very much, Angela. <laughs> no problem. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the questions that we have um, in the chat. So let's go ahead and, and start. so again, this is a time to feel free to ask all those um, burning questions that you may have. So let's go ahead and start from the first one. Can you receive a minor outside this faculty? Great question. Absolutely, definitely. You could actually do a minor in pretty much anything that's open to you. I think that uh, um, I'm trying to think of any really restricted ones. You know, obviously we don't have minors that are accessible like engineering or law. They don't really have uh, minors, but you could pretty much do most minors. Uh, we don't really have many restrictions on that, definitely. Excellent. Um, what is the process to join a joint honor program? Oh, joint honors. Oh, gosh. Okay. Joint honors is a very interesting program. Um, it depends when you start. If you start as a U0 student, it is recommended that you do certain math courses. And that's what our actual uh, sample schedules are for. When you actually go and start planning your studies and your first semester and your when you start doing registration in June, uh, you'll see that you have an option to do joint honors. Um, the courses are a little bit different. Uh, there's nothing that actually anyone could do joint honors within management. That's perfectly fine. It is a little bit harder and it's actually I always hesitate to, to talk about joint honors just because I know a lot of students say I want a challenge. Now, I'm all for challenges in university, uh, but I think that university in itself is a challenge. So I do caution students about it. It is very theoretical. Unless you love theoretical studies, it's not really recommended, or if you plan on doing a PhD in economics. So that's really what the joint honors leads you to. Uh, but I advise you to speak to an advisor like myself about it a little bit more before making that final decision. Excellent. Thank you, Angela. Um, concerning the international exchange, how long is it? And is it part of a major's credits or electives? So the nice thing about exchange is that you do get credit for the courses you do. Um, it will basically be, um, it could be for your major, it could be electives, it depends where you go. We can't guarantee that you'll get the credits you need for a major. We recommend always that you have some electives lingering around, but that's part of the process also. We help guide you on that. But yes, you can do courses towards your major, towards your, even towards our core courses. We have 12 core courses and you could actually do some of those on exchange as well. Some students opt to do that. Let's say if you're not really looking forward to finance, some students go and do it on exchange where it's a little different than our, <laughs> our finance course, let's say. Excellent. Um, we have another question um, regarding, I'm wonder, I was wondering if French students must necessarily do a 120 credit program. Okay, so French students that have done the French bac, basically, um, everyone has to do 120. Doesn't matter where you come from, even if you come from Seja, French bac, uh, um, APs, whatever it may be, you, everyone does 120. Now it depends on how many credits you get as advanced standing. Uh, French bac students, for example, will get anywhere from 27 to 30 credit. 
it's uh, advanced standing. So that means you only do a 93 credit program or a 90 credit program. And that's also part of your, when you look at the newly admitted page, you'll see uh, the credit breakdown there as well. So it is technically 90 credits, but everyone's required to complete 120 and you get 30 of it already done, I'll say. Exactly. Thank you. For international exchanges, what are the requirements um, to be eligible and can we choose where to go? Good question, okay. too. That's good. Yeah, it's um, it changes annually as far as the requirements, but you need a minimum. You need a 3.0 to go on exchange. That for sure. Um, you do choose, you get four options when you actually get to choose. So we recommend you choose four places that you'd like to go. And then afterwards it becomes like a ranking system. We sort of look to see who applied where, what, why you want to go to that school. There's an application process basically. Uh, so that's how we do it for exchange. So there are possibilities to go pretty much, most students get what they want to be perfectly honest. Excellent, thank you. Um, the other another question is how impactful is a minor in terms of what your career postgraduate will be? Uh, to be honest, not that much. <laughs> I actually, you know, to, to be perfectly honest, I know this is recorded and someone would probably not be happy with me, but your undergrad is is important, but it's not will not make or break the rest of your life. I just want to tell you guys that it really does not. You have to do something that you're interested in, at least. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, so do something you're interested in the minor. Don't actually choose something because you think it's going to get you a job. It's, it probably won't, actually. <laughs> exactly. And you're going to be putting in a lot of uh, time and effort. So you might as well enjoy it to the fullest <laughs> okay yeah. um another question for advanced placement um student when can we change the credit from ap score so i guess if you're coming in with ap's uh when we get the results in uh it actually gets put on your transcript and that's when you could actually we'll be able to determine and give you some core courses. Now, that's one thing I didn't really talk about. It depends on, I don't know how many people we have here doing APs, but for every three credits of APs, you could actually take a core course in the core curriculum. So let's say you did a, a world history for six credits and um, a language course for another six, that's 12 credits. That means you could actually, in your as a freshman student, you're allowed doing 12 credits of core courses. Um, so APs, it only comes out later though. We normally do that in August or September uh, once we actually get the scores, the final scores. Excellent. There's a question about when should you send AP scores given that I don't receive them um, this year's score. So don't worry, you have until before you start um, your, your, your classes. My offer admission says it's um, conditional on the maintaining of current academic standing. What does this concretely mean? And if I, okay, so I'll take this one because this yep. is more from, from my um, my area. Um, so thank you for your question. Um, it Don't worry about it, to be truly honest. If you have been, um, clearly you have been a good student, you have maintained your study skills, you have maintained that strong academic profile, there wouldn't be any reason why you would change what you're doing. In other words, your grades will still continue being the same way. So don't worry too much about it. What if, if there is a situation that, um, I don't know, uh, some important situation taking place, you know, death of a family member, my gosh, not, but anything that you believe has impacted your grades, you need to let us know. But other than that, do not worry again just continue doing what what you're doing and it should be fine again you're a good student you have an, a strong academic profile just make sure that you maintain it so again no i wouldn't worry too much about it at all um a question um yeah this is for you angela when is the registration of courses and where can i learn about each course so i am prepared for the rush good question <laughs> <laughs> okay so registration happens in june 
what's the exact date? Do you remember, Patricia? I, don't um, I believe the first for, uh, June fourth, June fifth. Um, it, 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 you have to be. We have to go online because each faculty opens at a different on a different date. But yes, it's in June, early June. <laughs> yeah, exactly, June. Um, so basically, what's going to happen is that you're going to go onto our newly admit page. I'll share a link with you. Be uh, shortly, uh, right up before the end of the presentation, and you'll be able to go to our newly admitted page. And from there, you're actually going to see the courses, the core courses, depending on where you're coming from. And you'll be able to sort of gauge which ones we give sample schedules for a reason to give you an idea of what's ideal to take together. It doesn't mean it's the only possibility, uh, but it is recommended. Uh, so that's where you start you'll start looking at it from that point from the newly admitted page and also you will be um asked to join another webinar mm -hmm. from our clay which stands for campus life and engagement they have webinars just for student registration so do not worry you will not be on your own they would provide you information and links um to give you more information so no worries at all you you will be covered no worries um Another question, um, taking the, the French back, math spécialité, will I start in year one? Yes, French back students do start as U1 students. Um, it depends on the spécialité, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I have to look it up here. It is mathematic. It is basically, you start as a pure one, year one, U1 student with 30 credits and you don't, have to do, you're only gonna have to do one math course basically. And it's all on our website, that's the fun thing. You could actually, it's all charts and you could actually say, okay, I did this, so I have to do this math course. Do pay attention, I, I can't stress it enough. If you did AP math, look at our chart, you will probably not have to repeat a math course. So please look at that, uh, it's very important. <laughs> My gosh, it is. Um, okay, another question. By the end of the third, fourth year, um, do we have an opportunity to do an internship in a company? And um, is it part of BCom? That's actually a great question, which I realized I did not touch on that much. Now, obviously, internships are integrated into some programs, not all programs, unfortunately. Uh, we have uh, sustainability and international management. That's another program that actually offers an interesting sort of array of subjects. Uh, you basically do a international business, um, concentration, 15 credits, and then afterwards you do a minor outside the faculty. You could do an internship, an exchange, or um, an independent studies. These options are available to you, and a language. So it's actually several components put together to create this major called international management. So that's one opportunity where you could actually do an internship as part of your program. Uh, the other one was sustainability, that you could do an internship. There are other sort of courses that allow you to do it called the fellowship program. So the first half is a research project and the second half is sort of a internship for a not-for-profit. Uh, there's lots of little opportunities along the way. We do recommend that students do internships in the summer terms, but that's what our Boosted 250 course, the first course you're going to take in management is going to be Boosted 250. And that's when you're going to be integrated and you're going to learn all about the services of career services and how they're going to help you along with your CV and all the other things. Uh, so I think that's the, the best way to start. But we do encourage internships. Uh, but like I said, only, only two programs really have it as integrated as part for credit, I'll say. Excellent. Thank you. We have another question. When will we have to choose our courses? We, we have mentioned it's at the beginning of um, June. Um, but what is the balance between core courses, majors, concentration? Okay. So like I said earlier, that the beauty of our program is in your first year, if you start as a U1, you're going to have a core curriculum in your first year. So you have no major decisions to make until your second year. I don't want you to feel rushed. I don't think you should feel rushed at all. Uh, take your time, digest those core courses. And then afterwards, at this time, actually about this time next year, that's when you're going to say, hmm, maybe I wish, should maybe think about doing a major or concentration or what dosages. It's all about dosages. You also learn that a major, generally you do it because you're super passionate about it. You want to do every possible course under the sun about it. Um, a concentration is like, I like it, 
but I'm not sold on it. I want to have that skill or I want to know more about that. Uh, you could actually do multiple concentrations as well. It's become increasingly popular for fields like consulting. I know a lot of people might have heard about doing something like that. Consulting requires you to have a, a vast array of different knowledge bases. For example, like um, uh, IT sort of things, like uh, technology, um, a quantitative field, a qualitative field, like a marketing field. That's what uh, consulting would be about. Yeah. Excellent. How can I pursue honors in investment management? There's another one that you don't have to worry about right away. Uh, if you're coming in as a U0, don't even think about it yet. It is an option in your third year. As a U1 student, you're going to take a few core courses and then afterwards you're going to apply in your first year for the second year. It is through application. They accept 19 students a year. Our Honors Investment Management is actually a very nice program. It's a small group, a small cohort of students that work on real world investing. They actually do it daily. Every day they meet, they, uh, they, they basically do the trading and things like that. We actually have a lab devoted to it where all the students gather and do that on a daily basis and monitor their money. And they've made lots of money actually, which is very nice. I can't remember what our tally is at, but it's on the honors investment page. It's in the millions now. <laughs> It's a lot of money. <laughs> I see some questions about submitting documents. So please make sure that you submit them before the start of the um, semester. So you have pretty much all summer. But if I were you, as soon as you have them, please make sure that you send them our way. Um, when will we have to choose our concentrations? So concentrations as a U1 student, the same thing as majors, you choose that in your second year. Again, you do a core curriculum in your first year. And then only then do you have to start thinking about doing a major or concentrations and what dosages you're doing that. So don't worry about it. I, I know a lot of students worry right now about these sort of decisions, um, but they're not. Take your time, decide. Uh, that's what a core curriculum's for. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I think there's a I'm, I'm trying to group questions and there's one that you may want to just refer to it quickly that it would address some others. What is the difference between major courses, concentrations and core courses? And can you take some courses without deciding on a major? This question um, addresses a, a number of the others coming up. So those of you who have asked this question um, after 630, the 630 stamp, here's your answer. <laughs> okay, so basically, core courses, we have a core curriculum in the management faculty, um, you basically have to do 12 courses of a variety of different flavors, uh, you have accounting, finance, uh, marketing, organizational behavior, all these type of courses that are the core basics of management. Uh, and you normally do that in your U1 year. So like I said, don't worry if you're a U0 student, you could touch on these, you will not be doing them right away but you start, you could do one or two of them in your first U0 year, U1s, or then afterwards they start doing those core courses and only in your third or, oh, well, I know it gets confusing because it's U0, U1, U0s only start in their third year and U1s start in the second year for their core, their major, I apologize, their major and concentration courses. And that's where we come in, we help you plan that. Exactly. You're not on your own at all. Don't no, worry. <laughs> never. That, that's why I feel like I, I, I don't I don't like to give a lot of information because they're very individual sort of choices at the end of the day. And I think it's important that students do meet with advisors or at least communicate with us just to know what's going on. And if it's very simple, we'll tell you just oh, do this, do that. We're we have lots of people and also that. interests change as well and they get to develop new um, interests so that's important so again at academic advisors I cannot stress this enough um, okay um, is there a lot of additional individual work outside of class this is a very good question too Ooh, I would say yes absolutely actually majority of it is outside of the class I have to say it's um, uh, when you think about it uh, if you're doing 
it's twice a week most classes they're they're about an hour and a half classes so three times so you're looking at about 15 class hours which is not a lot compared to high school um and then afterwards the rest is all on your own uh you there is quite a significant amount but to be honest i don't like putting a formula to it i know a lot of students are sort of like how many hours should i spend studying I don't know, not everybody's the same and that's okay. If you need an extra five hours on you know, that accounting course and your organizational behavior course, you're breezing through because you understand concepts, your time changes. And I think everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. And I think the core courses will reveal that as well. <laughs> so don't be intimidated or worry about that. 100%. Um, are we still eligible for residences if we start in U1? Yes, absolutely. Don't worry. First year students, regardless, U1, U0, you're absolutely um, guaranteed a residence. Um, we, uh, okay, so um, Angela also talked about um, internships. So I'm going to skip a few questions regarding internships. Um, she already addressed it. Um, you talked about U0 and U1 and the differences. Um, I hope it is still it is clear. Um, if, if it's still not clear, go ahead and add it at the end of the chat, because um, I only see one person asking about it. Um, OK, uh, are concentrations more developed courses than minors? OK, so I know where terminology is a little bit weird, but I think that in general, the way the concentrate we look at concentrations, they're almost identical to minors. It's just there are five courses in a subject, while a minor sometimes is six courses in a subject, and they're out of our faculty. That's the difference, really. At the end of the day, concentrations are kind of like minors. It's just that because you have a core curriculum, it covers those basic courses in the subject, and that's why you only have to do five courses in a concentration. Perfect. Um, I don't think I'll get back the okay the grades before the term starts. Would I still be put in U one from the start? That's a very specific question um, that we would have to look into your own um, file. So I don't I don't want to um, use up the the. But anyway, Alex, don't worry. Um, all you need to do is make sure that you submit it when you have them, and if you don't have them, um, we will work something out, so no worries. This is really a specific question that only applies to you. We've talked about the difference between concentrations and minors. Um, OK, this is a very good question. How do you know if you will start in U0 or U1? Maybe just, just want to talk about that just very quickly. Well, normally it depends on what your academic background, where you're coming from. So that newly admitted page, again, I know I keep referring to it, uh, but it's it will tell you where you're starting with how many credits and what maths you're missing. So that that's your guide, to be perfectly honest. But there are certain types that start with U1 and certain students start as U0 generally. Perfect. And Angela is going to share her email at the end again um, in the chat because we have people asking for it. Um, we already answered the U1, U0 question. Uh, okay, interesting. In U1, how many hours of class do we have per week? So regardless U1 or U0, there is a there's an average. So how many class, how many hours of class do we have per week? I'd say about 15 hours, maybe a class a week. It depends, but uh, yeah, I'd say around there, but that's not where it ends. Exactly. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's just the beginning. Exactly, uh, exactly. <laughs> um, are there requirements to be eligible for a certain major in second year? Okay. The nice thing is actually, once you're in the faculty of management, you can choose any major you want, any concentration you want, with the exception of the honors program, the honors investment management. That's the only one that's through application. Everything else is open to everyone. Excellent. If someone's career's interest um, were to change after their first year, regardless if it's U0 or U or U1, would you be able to switch faculties or we our faculties locked um, in upon admissions. So, yeah, so in theory, well, no, let me start from the very beginning. So if your strategy is to um, 
try to go in to then switch to the other one, we would discourage you from doing it because it, I mean, has it happened in the past? Yes. Is it something that happens often? Absolutely not. Um, but this is why it's very important that you keep in mind that the faculty you're choosing to be a part of, that it is one that interests you. And this is very important why you need to connect with people like Angela who are there to support you in this process. Because maybe within the faculty, there may be an interest that may shift. And then again, that's when meaningful conversations with your academic advisors really do come in handy. So again, if the if the strategy is to go in to then switch to another one, again, I would discourage you from um, considering that as an option. Are there a lot of group work and projects? How are classes generally taught? Very good question. That's a good question. Management does have a lot of group work that unfortunately I get it out of. Uh, it actually... Um, most are lecture based. A lot of our courses, obviously, especially in the first year and especially the, the core courses tend to be lecture based, but they do have components of group work as well. So the, a lot of courses will do, um, I'm trying to think of the, the other, and as you go up in the upper years, then afterwards more group projects become, they become actually more important almost uh, compared to lectures and things like that. Perfect. Um, and what is the requirement for investment management in terms of math in U0? Good question. Um, okay, so you don't have to do any special maths as a U0 student to get into investment management. It's like the major in finance almost, which you would only need the basic maths, which would be Math 122 and Math 123 uh, if you're coming in as a U0 pure freshman. So don't worry about your maths. You don't need super strong maths or anything like that. Maybe you're a whiz at finance and accounting and you don't have to worry about your maths. Just do the basic ones. Excellent. Um, and Angela is going to also share with you two um, documents um, that we want to make sure that you um, refer to, because in these documents, you will be able to have access to all the links that you need, um, all the information, um, quick information that you need. Um, it, Angela has gone through everything, but nevertheless, it's important for you guys to be able to have the links um, and access um, that information. Um, okay, I am um, cognizant of the time. We're doing very well. We have three minutes left. So if we're a student from a U.S. high school without access to IB and have never taken AP math course, do we start at, in U0? Yes, you would be starting as a U0, definitely. And you'd have to do our math courses, which would be math 122 and 123. Now these math courses, you could actually do an alternative math course. That's the one thing I do want to briefly touch on before we go. I, I keep stressing the math courses because a lot of students get confused about what math they have to do. Our requirements are math 122 and math 123, which is Cal and linear. However, there's alternative courses you can take, which are higher levels, which are the math 140, and Math 133. Uh, like I said, it's all on the website and you could decide which one you want. If you love math, love, I say not, I like it. No, love math. I would recommend that doing 140 and 133. Um, but again, I caution students that have an, uh, an okay background, not you know a super strong math background to do Math 122, 123. It's a lot easier. You'll get better grades at the end of the day. Um, and it's just that you maximize options with 140, 133. But again, we reach out to an advisor and see what's best for you. Excellent. Thank you very much. OK, so we have reached the end of our um, event tonight. I just want to remind you to please go into our student platform, Minerva, and please make sure that you read your letter of acceptance and make sure that you um, understand what the deadline is, um, because you do have to confirm uh, by a certain deadline. Usually it is May 1st, but please make sure that you take a look at that deadline. Um, we cannot thank you enough for being here with us once again um, on behalf of 
Faculty of Management, and of course, um, our recruitment uh, team. Uh, welcome once again to McGill University. Um, I'm hoping, uh, we're hoping that you feel empowered, that you have the resources that you need. Um, and of course, that you know that you're. this is just the beginning. So you will be supported in the process. So I wish you all a wonderful rest of your day, beginning of your day for some others. Thank you very much for um, your time. And um, of course, please make sure that um, you do confirm as soon as you can. Um, and I see another question, a private message that just came in. Um, um, just make sure that you do confirm, even if your first option um, is not, um, if you haven't heard from the other uh, um, program, you will hear back from both. So please make sure that you confirm right away. And if for whatever reason you want your second option, it's totally okay. You just need to let us know and the deposit fee will be transferred. Okay. So once again, have a wonderful rest of your day or start of your day. And um, again, on behalf of the entire team, welcome to McGill University and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.